Welcome back. This is the Ben Shapiro Show. Joining us on the line are Justin Folk and Dr. Charles Kessler. Charles Kessler is professor of government at Claremont McKenna College and Claremont Graduate University. He's also editor of the Claremont Review of Books, which is just a fantastic publication. Justin Folk is the director of the tremendous documentary starring people like me. No Safe Spaces came out last year, and they have a brand new film, Right Makes Might, the Lincoln-Douglas debate. We'll get into it. So Dr. Kessler, first of all, how are you, sir? How's it going? I'm fine. Uh, uh, thanks, Ben. I appreciate this opportunity. You bet. So let's talk about the documentary Right Makes Might. Why should people care about the Lincoln-Douglas debates today, especially given the fact that uh, I-, I would say that our presidential debates seem to have devolved somewhat from the Lincoln-Douglas debates? <laughs> well, yes, Lincoln-Douglas it wasn't. <laughs> the other <laughs> night, the, the uh, I was uh, saying to Justin that I've never heard the term dumpster fire so often <laughs> as I did in the commentary on the uh, Trump-Biden debate. Uh, But Lincoln Douglas is important because it's still the most famous and justly famous uh, forensic exchange in American history. It's the most important political debate, single most important political debate, I would say, in American history. Despite the fact that these two guys, Lincoln and Douglas, were running for Senate, U.S. Senate from Illinois. They weren't running for president yet. That was two years later in 1860. But all of the issues, basically, of the presidential race were set up and thoroughly uh, aired in uh, Illinois in 1858. So it's, uh, it was about freedom and slavery. Uh, you can't ask for a more fundamental issue, even though it focused on a narrow aspect of that larger issue, whether slave, slavery should be allowed to spread into the Western territories. But it's still, for every American citizen, it's still... Uh, plums the most important um, issue in American politics. Yeah, Dr. Kessler, you know, when we talk about those issues, it seems like you know, people don't remember our history at all, and so they don't understand that a lot of the things that we're talking about today are, in fact, rooted in, in the various perspectives on the Constitution of the United States that are, that are repeated in the Lincoln-Douglas debates. This is something that, that Claremont has long talked about, that, that Harry Jaffa, the late Harry Jaffa, talked about at length. And that was this difference in vision about what the Constitution represented. For, for a lot of people, the Constitution represented basically just a, a contract between the states that was dissolvable at any time. Uh, but, but for Lincoln, it represented a fulfillment of the Declaration of Independence. And, and this debate is now being had, it seems, on a, on a much lower and stupider level about the history of America and what America represents today. You have one side that basically says America represents the, the founding principles. The Constitution is a system that was designed in order to protect those founding principles, as Lincoln suggested himself, that it was a frame of silver around an apple of gold. And then there are people who say, no, 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 the Constitution was a compact between a bunch of powerful people to reinstate hierarchies of either racial or economic power dissolvable at any time. Is that what those debates were about? And if so, how are those being repeated today? Well, as you say, um, you know, the our class of politicians, the sort of the public men uh, and women of America today are so miseducated, so poorly educated compared to um, the minds of <laughs> Lincoln and Douglas, that it's, it really is completely dumbed down in today's discussion. But if you want to see uh, an argument between white supremacy and the, uh, and the principles of non-racism, of human equality, you want to read the Lincoln-Douglas debates. Because uh, today everything is sort of um, characterized or, or slandered as white supremacy in our politics. Well, uh, Douglas makes the argument for white supremacy, uh, and it's carefully worked out, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's historically grounded. It's everything that the 1619 Project is not, basically. But it is then refuted by Abraham Lincoln in an even better uh, historically grounded and morally um, astute argument. But, uh, you know, if you call everything that uh, every aspect of American history white supremacy or evidence of white supremacy, then uh, you can't explain anything. If you go back to someone who's actually arguing for a version of white supremacy, you can really see that, you know, this country is about the triumph of anti-slavery principles, anti-racist principles, uh, and that from the very beginning, those were the principles that the founders had uh, in their mind's eye and politically um, enshrined in the Constitution to the extent that they could. So, Justin, obviously you had the uh, unenviable task of trying to boil boil down these very uh, complex and nuanced debates uh, into some sort of film. How, How did you go about doing that? We let Charles talk 
a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I'm I, just I think, a talking I think having, head. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, no, did all really, the work. we had we had some great experts on the film: Charles Kessler, Michael Burlingame, Lucas Morell. And these guys have studied Lincoln uh, backwards and forward, and they have so much to bring the American public in terms of giving context, in terms of telling the story of the way it actually was. So we just leaned heavily on those guys and provided some some visuals and some background and just tried to give it some structure. Um, It really is, from a story perspective, an amazing story. I mean, it's got everything. It's a true underdog story because Lincoln was a nobody before this. Nobody knew who he was. And uh, Stephen Douglas was a juggernaut. He was a giant. He was called the little giant. And so from a story perspective, it really truly is like facing the giant. And Lincoln comes out of nowhere, formulates these ideas, these arguments, which, you know, it came at a big cost to him politically. He didn't benefit from arguing that slavery was wrong because blacks couldn't vote. So he didn't gain one vote by going out there and and putting these ideas out there in these debates. Um, Ultimately, he did it because it was right, and that kind of gives us the title of our movie, Right Makes Might. And and so, uh, but going back to your question, I think just leaning into Charles and and Michael Burlingame and Lucas Morrell, letting them kind of flesh out the story was our approach. So, you know, one other thing I'd like to note, Ben, um, is, you know, it was was great having you in those safe spaces, but uh, I will say on Charles' behalf, you know, he didn't. He didn't cost six hundred thousand dollars in security to, uh, <laughs> to be able to film to, to film with him. So, so D- Dr. Kessler, uh, you know, I, I, if you can, uh, we have about a minute and a half left here, so that gives you plenty of time. How do you boil all of this down into the debates that we are watching today between Trump and and Biden? It, it's very difficult to to sort of boil down the intellectualized American philosophy into debates between what looked like the other night Chewbacca versus the Swedish Chef. So how, how is a normal American supposed to read, you know, any sort of deeper principles into the armed combat that we watch? Well, there are principles uh, behind the uh, the dumpster fire that we saw the other night. Um, and they're not, uh, you know, so mysterious that you can't locate them. I mean, the Democratic Party is increasingly a party of group rights, of racial, ethnic uh, and other kinds of um, group rights, class rights to some extent. You have socialism, you have identity politics, you have these things in in slightly new, wrapped in new terms, but it's really the same old argument that individuals don't have rights, groups have rights, and the stronger the group, the greater the rights it gets politically. And so on campus today, in American politics today, the tendency is to reduce all questions of justice really to questions of power. Um, and of might, and to derive right from might. And that is really the direction the Democratic Party, I'm afraid, in- increasingly is going. And the Republicans are trying to make the argument that right makes might, that individuals have rights, mm-hmm. that, that they are the ultimate minority, as it were, um, and that, uh, that uh, the right of the majorities to rule has to be consistent with the rights of the individual, which are God-given or natural rights, and it, that is still the fundamental question of our politics, in a way, as it was in a more acute form when slavery was still with us uh, back in 1858. And Dr. Kessler, really appreciate your time. Justin Folk, appreciate your time as well. Good luck with the film Right Makes Might, the Lincoln-Douglas debates. It should be on Fox. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks. All righty, coming up, we're going to be taking your phone calls, 855-236-3228. This is The Ben Shapiro Show.